Hey guys, Boone Down South. Today we're doing a little something different than the normal. When we get back to fishing though, I got a tournament scheduled next month. Anyway, I got a project that I'm working on that I, that I need some different tools I don't have. I really wanted a like a compact trim router for a long time, but I came across something where I need to cut a bunch of letters out. And so I did a little research and I found this Rockler interlock kit. And they've got a couple different kits. This is a state park kit, two and a quarter inch letters. I got like three different sizes of this kit. It takes a sp certain size bit to work in it. So I ordered the bit for that because I do need to cut some letters out. But what I needed was a small router. So that gave me a really good excuse to go ahead and get this DeWalt. Did a little research for what I wanted. This is the DeWalt, DeWalt compact trim router. I've got a fixed base with a plunge base because I really need to plunge to uh, fit this guy. And, and this interlock kit includes the guide bushings you need to fit, fit inside their templates for these letters. And that fits inside the, uh, the plunge base for this too. So we're gonna open these up. I'm gonna try them out, let you know what I think about it. And I think I'm just gonna kind of make some basic signs to start with to try to kind of get familiarized with the router. And then once I've got that down pretty good, I'm going to uh, start working on another project and that'll be another video, but it's really cool, I gotta tell you. So you'll have to wait on that one. It's gonna be another week or two before I get that one completed. So anyway, hit that like and subscribe. Everything open, you got your instructions, you got your collet wrench, you got your plunge base with a clear base down here. This is where your bushing guides are going to go, so it's ready to fit that stuff uh, for the interlock kit. And then you've got your regular fixed trim router, nice lightweight. I like, that. I mean, it's got it's you know, got a little weight to it, but it's not overbearing, you know. So I feel like it's going to be nice to keep that blade going. Clear plate on the bottom, that's great. And then it came with his bag, and my daughter saw it and said, Hey, dad, they even gave you a name brand designer purse. So, uh yeah, I mean, complete with bags and everything over here inside. I probably won't even use that. But anyway, um, that's what we got. So we're going to hook this thing up and start doing some routing. All right. So I uh, haven't even used this yet, and I already called DeWalt to talk to them. Basically, when you're going to put this in the plunge base router, there is the collar, which is right here. And you need to unthread it from here because you don't need it when it's in the plunge base. But it snaps into place on the fixed collar. No problem there. And then, of course, you have your grooves. And you got your divots right here, so you need to line the grooves up on the divots to drop it in. And basically, they tell you to basically unlock this latch right here, the locking lever, okay? And basically, if you look, that locking lever is really controlling this pressure plate right here. Because when this is locked, that's what's putting the pressure on the motor housing there to help lock it in place, okay? So, obviously, it's got to be a lock, but it's to be loose. And then, basically, you just take your, your motor and, you know, like I said, line up the divots and drop it down. The problem I had was that right here, that's where the motor stop is, but my router was, my uh, motor was stopping right here at this unit. And it didn't matter what I did, I couldn't get it through there. I ended up calling support, but they were looking it up and they were trying to watch YouTube videos, but I started looking around and playing around with it. And basically this piece right here, I used a two aught Allen wrench and basically put it in this, uh, back up here so I can get it. Put it in here and basically started cranking it in this direction, okay? Down, down, down. And basically it brought this unit further and further that way. And when that happened, that got loose enough and now the unit slides right in. But that was, there you go, right down to the stop where I need to be. That's how it should look, okay? And that was not in the instructions anywhere that I could find. Anyway, so just giving you a heads up on that, uh, you might need to make that adjustment out of the box. Just playing around with it, so it seems to cut. So let's make a sign. All right, so this is the Rockler Interlock Sign Makers template for a two and a quarter inch state park kit for professional sign making. So I guess we're gonna make a professional sign with this. So let's check this out. Template instructions. Here's all these templates. I guess this is the bushing. So this will thread up into the router plunge base and that will go down to the slot of the grooves of these numbers. So what I did look into about this, so for instance, here's the A, right? This is A1, there's gonna be an A2 and the A2 will be where you bring your cross piece across. And so some numbers or some letters are single pass letters or numbers and then other ones are, it's multiple passes to do them. And there's also spacing and stuff in here. And so they've got this thing where you go online, and I think it's called the wizard or something like that, so I'm making wizard template or something, and you go in and you just type your word, 
So like I'm going to make a sign playing around here that says fun zone. It's going to go into one of my cabins as you walk down into the lower basement. There's like a theater with a Xbox Series X and a pool table and, and, and this new project that you'll see in another video and some arcade games and stuff like that. So I'm going to call it the fun zone. So I'm just going to create a sign as you walk down to be on the wall. So so I'm going to punch on the window. It's going to tell me exactly what templates to use where. And it's not it's just like F-U-N space Z-O-N-E, but it's it's uh, like these, like, like I said, some of these letters take multiple steps. And so that's what we're going to do. But this is what's in the box. There's quite a few uh, templates in the box. They are plastic, but they give you duplicates of stuff as well. So, yeah, here we go. Here's like A2. So after you route the A, you come in and you put the, the next piece. So you pull this up, put that piece on to finish the A. So, again, some letters take multiple passes. So... I'm going to punch in a wizard, see what we're going to do. I'm going to get a piece of wood. We're going to cut the length for a sign, see how long it's going to be, and give it a shot. All right, and here it is with the guide bushing installed in the plate down there. And you can see you've got just uh, your template spacing right there. So that's going to set down into the template, so that's why the templates won't get cut. Okay, so this looks a little goofy, I know, but never having done this before. I've seen other guys just use um, the painter's tape here to hold this down. But see it's kind of rough there? Make sure it's smooth, because what, since I haven't done this before, what I did, you know, this is going to sit inside, right? And I kind of just kind of moved my router and made some test maneuvers with it to make sure how it's going to feel. Since I haven't done it, I kind of went through each letter just to see what the feel is. First problem I had is this wasn't quite done, so it uh, down all the way, so it caught, okay? So make sure your tape's all the way down, number one. Number two, I know I got this extra letter. This is the second part of the O, which will come in behind this guy once we route it. It's a two-part letter. And we're not going to have S over here, but I added a, uh, another template letter to each side to give me a level surface because when I was doing my test run on the F, it wanted to tilt a little bit since it was, you know, it was lower without this here. So I just put those on the ends. I'm hopefully going to remember not to route those. So, so let's see what, what we can do here. Okay, so I've routed everything. Now I've got to swap out the O1 for the O2. So I'm just going to pull the tape up in those sections. And this is, I just use it for a spacer up here to level the get my router base a level area to work with. All right, I'll pop this guy out. O1, put O2 in its place. One other thing I learned for using this kit, make sure these are pushed down all the way because I had a little bump and I was right and I couldn't get the router over because it was catching on one of the edges of the sign. All right, again, we're just hitting the Rest of the O there. All right. I switched over to masking tape because it was actually sliding on me with the other stuff, with the painter's tape. So painter's tape just was not having a strong enough grip for me. So that's why I switched over to the masking tape. And the sign did slip on me a little bit from the first time doing it. So again, the S wasn't part of the game, right? Fun zone, and I'm not worried about my pencil drawings here because that's gonna get sanded down. So, um, yeah, my Z was a little off from where the template moved on me here a little bit. Video yeah, might look a little funky right there. So yeah, probably just need a little practice on the individual letters, getting used to the feel. I'm gonna trim it down to size and we're gonna maybe put the fixed base back on this guy and maybe route a nice edge for it and Maybe do some 45s or something over here on the ends or some little curly hue or something. I don't know. We'll figure something out here in a minute. What I do like, I tell you, the plunge here is really nice and convenient. Just hitting that to go down, hitting it to go back up. Really nice. It's easy to adjust the depth. And uh, so, so far, I'm pretty happy with it. Let's finish up this sign. All right. So that was my first attempt. When I started looking at the Z, I didn't like it. It's because when the, the template started moving on me when I was using the painter's tape, so that knot hole is right on this side of the board, so I'm flipping it over. I'm gonna try it on this side, 
now that I, in theory, know what I'm doing, I had a little practice, so I'm thinking this is gonna come out a little better, but when he's masking tape, template shouldn't move, and I flattened everything down, so hopefully I don't have, I've overcome some of the learning curve issues, and maybe this will be neater on this one, so I'll give it another go on the second side. All right, second go around was much better. Everything's much more crisper. I got a little edge on the end there that could have been a little better. Definitely my Z's are much better. Um, again, the ends, it seemed the same problem on my ends right there. I got a little divot there. I don't know if that makes a difference or maybe that is part, no, that's not how the template is, but anyway, this is definitely workable here. So uh, yeah, I think it just takes a little practice, but uh, I think these templates are pretty cool. I did end up clamping my board down because this sticky backing back here was not holding my board very good. So you gotta get different sticky back here. But anyway, yeah, so I'm gonna um, finish up this sign. I'm gonna... All right, got my sign cut out. I put some 45s on the edge or something different. Put a different bit on here, went back to the fixed base. Pretty simple swap out for that. So I uh, ran a test cut on this board just to see what it's gonna do. I'm gonna run a light pass and we're gonna go a little bit deeper and just gonna try it out and uh, see how it goes. All right, I got my first pass. I'm going a little deeper on the router. And uh, I'm telling you, I'm liking this compact portable. I've never used a compact portable one, but man, it's, it's nice. I'm liking it. plunge rider use the fixed base rider it's working pretty good once i got through that problem with just getting it in the, the plunge base but got it in there a little bit of practice got a good sign i think gave me a nice rattage edge, edge anyway so i guess my final thoughts it takes a little bit of practice with the interlock to get it down it took me a little bit so plan on if you're trying that out just uh spend a few minutes on it and just go slow and it's definitely doable but i've got, i'm going to be cutting out i'm going to be cutting letters routing letters like you wouldn't believe on this next project that i've got so uh, and you'll see that in another video. It's going to be all, I'm telling you, it's going to be awesome. So subscribe to see that video when it comes out because it is going to be awesome. I've got a lot of things I got to do. So I'm going to make like another sign for the pool room in this cabin. It's got an indoor heated pool. So I'm going to call that the splash zone and hang these two signs up. That's kind of giving me the practice with the router and with the interlock state park temple system. And I think it's going to work for the other project, which is the big project I'm talking about. So stay tuned. We'll get this finished up. All right. So I've had plenty of practice now doing this. So I decided it still isn't perfect. I don't like the some of the lettering a little bit, but now that I've had a lot of practice, I know what I'm doing with this. I went ahead and got another board. I redid my sign here and uh, made the other sign as well. I feel like I, I did a good job with that. We put some acrylic paint on here, painted them up, hung them up. So here's a few tips now overall that I've been using this. Number one, make sure your templates are flat. They're locked in the groove place together very tightly. When you use that tape, if you go with a wider painter's tape that will work when i started off i used not as wide painter's tape and that would not hold but the wider painter's tape held up real well so that'll work fine for holding your templates down make sure it's smooth i like to use extra templates on either side of my lettering to keep it from wobbling and then when you're done routing your letters just stop go back blow all the dust out the sawdust out and then take a look at it if you don't see what you like put the router back in there and go again one of the key mistakes that I made early on is I did not run that router over every inch of the outside edge of every temple. In other words, if I came down the back side of the F, I really need to go to the right side of the F and work up as well, like my E's. If I ratted my E's out and I got to that bottom of that E, I kind of scooted across there, but make sure you hold that template against the top part of that edge and the bottom part of that edge and go around every aspect of that to get your crisp, clean lettering done. That's kind of the biggest thing that uh, I noticed, like my ends, you saw those divots in the ends, that's because I didn't run the router back up the left side of that upper slope going up. And that's why that little part was divoted out there. So that's one of the biggest tips with that. So overall, I like the kit, it does take some practice. If you want really nice letters, it's gonna take some practice. So put some new signs together, got them painted, they look great in place, I think. And uh, overall, I think it's a good kit, but it does take some practice to get it really good. I want my stuff to look good. So let me wrap up uh, my thoughts on the router for you, and that'll take care of this video. All right, so I know I initially made fun of the bag that came with it. My daughter called it my name brand purse. Turns out I'm working on this out of town, this project, and the bag came in really handy, y'all. It all packs in there really nice. Just 
zips right up here. Fits all in there, very nice. So yeah, I actually like the bag too, guys. So it's a bonus. Okay guys, as you can see from this project that I'm working on, I have put some significant time uh, into this new DeWalt router, the plunge base. I've used it both with the fixed base, the plunge base. I do like this router, very ergonomic, where everything's at. It's easy to adjust with the, the depth for the plunge router. The going back and forth from fixed to plunge base is very simple. I like that. I didn't realize this when I got it. I just needed a compact router, but it's got a light, which came in really handy. It was getting dark last night when we were trying to route some more of this grid work. And even this morning, just letting you see the fine detail. I've tried a couple different bits in here, but as you can see, I've done a lot of routing of these grooves here for this uh, product that I'm working on. Again, stay tuned, subscribe to see what that product is because it's gonna be really cool. Yeah, so I'm pretty happy with it and good addition to the workshop. I made some signs with it, done some routing here with it, done some edge routing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it and I feel like it's a good deal for my workshop again. So thanks for watching and catch you next time.